as yet another winter sets in and Delhi makes it back to the headlines for its poor air quality. We hold this conversation in a workplace which has shown some remarkable results for countering indoor air pollution. Kamal Mittal, its enterprising CEO, now recognized as a workplace wellness pioneer, says the air quality inside his office is as fresh as the Swiss Alps. And he has facts to back it. Real-time air quality data monitored from his office showed ambient PM10 at 165 microgram per cubic meter, while inside the building it varied from 4 to 10 micrograms per cubic meter. For PM2.5, when ambient value was 120 microgram per cubic meter, inside the building it varied from 3 to 7 micrograms per cubic meter. The job of growing fresh air is done by nearly 7,000 plants inside his office that line up the corridors and windows spread out on walls or dangle from the ceilings. It is quite literally a forest out here. All this greenery has given clear health benefits. In 2008, a research study established that the inhabitants of this building have higher productivity, improved blood oxygen, better brain function, fewer asthma and eye irritation cases as compared to non-smokers employed elsewhere. Welcome to the Paharpur Business Centre. Mr. Mittal, thank you for joining us today and uh, it's an absolute pleasure to speak with you here at the Paharpur Business Centre. Your preoccupation with air quality began uh, with a very personal health crisis and uh, you speak about that in your very famous TED talk. Tell us what happened. Well, I became allergic to Delhi's air and uh, I started getting lung problems in terms of uh, allergies. So doctors gave me puffs and uh, anti-allergy pills, etc. And I think all that allergy, anti-allergy pills, etc., which I've had, have led to hearing aid issues. So my hearing has been affected over these years because of having too much medication. At that time, the doctors were very clear that leave Delhi, it's not suiting you. What is wrong, we don't know. But whenever I would leave Delhi, I would go away from Delhi, I would become okay for the next few days. Coming back to Delhi, again a problem. So. I didn't know what was happening and given the fact that all my friends and family are in Delhi, uh, we started thinking if we leave Delhi, how does it matter whether we go to Goa, we go to Vancouver or go wherever, you'll have to find new friends, you'll have to get to know new people and I didn't feel like doing that. So the idea which I had was how can I fix it? So I was on the board of IIT Delhi and I went, went there. Uh, and requested the director and said, please help me. In the board meeting, uh, please help me. And all the eminent people sitting around the table uh, said, please help. So the director said, what's your budget? I said, what's your budget to die? Uh, there, there is no budget, I do whatever is required. So fortunately, all the heads of all the departments of IIT came over and they started uh, brainstorming. And uh, they suggested that I recruit some uh, research assistants so that we can look at what the possibilities are. So we got research assistants and they found that NASA was doing some work to put people on the moon or in space stations. So the thinking was if NASA can think of green plants to put people on the moon, certainly I can possibly have air quality which is perfect for me by having green plants. And the, one of the motivations was that we have a family home at Prithvi Raj Road. We have hundreds of trees there. So he said, well, we possibly should be okay. But to work in South Delhi was difficult because South Delhi was more polluted at that time. So given this, I started thinking, why not learn from our heritage? And the question came up, why did Lord Buddha sit under the people tree? And why is there a Tulsi plant in most homes? So let's look at that. 
So got a lot of horticulturists involved. And in fact, Tata Energy Research Institute at that time, headed by Mr. Darbari Set, helped in doing air quality testing uh, throughout the year. And we found in this whole process that uh, in testing, we found that the benzene levels in Delhi were like 100 times more than normal. And the chances of getting leukemia in Delhi were close to 1%. So we found that possibly this benzene could be one of the irritants. And uh, that could be one. And in general, how to clean up the Delhi's air. So I was lucky in research. I've, had, I've led research organizations doing years of research with so many PhDs and no results. But in this case, we were lucky. We found plants which worked. And we found three plants which were most effective. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's, you know, the, uh, in your uh, video again, which has now got millions of uh, uh, views uh, on, uh, on the TED video, you talk about how your friendship with plants began. And there were three plants in particular that you speak about. And each plant uh, provides a very distinct that's service. Right. That's right. Uh, so would you talk a little bit about that? OK. There are lot of, every plant does photosynthesis. Every plant does some, some gives you some benefit. But we wanted to find plants which are common, which are inexpensive, and you can easily maintain them indoors. So we found that A, areca palm was a good plant, which was very effective in converting CO2 into oxygen during the day, and also removing some PM 2.5s and cleaning up the air in general. At night, for night use, we found that the Sansevieria, or mother-in-law's tongue, to be the best plant. And for removing volatile chemicals like benzene, formaldehyde, we found money plant to be the simplest plant, which would effectively do this. So we loaded this building with 1,200 plants, and we got excellent results. And <clears throat> that continued for many years. We are sitting here in one of the greenhouses of uh, the Paharpur Business Center. You say this is one of the main lungs which pumps fresh air for the inhabitants of this building. What is it that goes on inside this building? Of course, we can see and you say there are 7,000 plants over here. But just for a layman, what is it that makes air quality here so good? This, this, these things happen in sort of phases. So we were able to solve the problem. <clears throat> by what we did, however, and reduce the duties on the plants, the plants were then doing only two, three things. One is converting CO2 into oxygen, remove them, removing the volatile chemicals like formaldehyde, benzene, etc. And the third, which we did not know why it was happening, when we tested bacteria and fungus, we found the bacteria fungus levels in the building to be extremely low. And we said, well, why is it so low? Why? What are we doing here which is so low? And then we traced it back to our planters, which have patented special planters, which the roots eat up, they thrive on bacteria and fungus, and they gobble it up. So the bacteria fungus levels also in the building were lower. Then I found that a lot of my friends would say, Kamal, you're doing this because you can afford it. So uh, it's not something which everybody can do. So you, because you had a problem, you learned what to do, so you're doing it. You don't care about the cost. You tell us how much does it cost. Tell us how, how, to, uh, how to do the job. And so I said, okay, let's also focus on how much energy are we using. And focus on energy and make sure that we've got numbers on it so that we can say that we can are saving money on energy. So we started carefully monitoring our energy consumption. In the last few years, yeah. we have focused on today, as you were asking me, what do we do now? So what we do today is first we've designed, this was an experiment we did about a year ago, and we've designed a heat exchanger, which is cooled by a special cooling tower designed and operating in such a way <clears throat> that it is able to give us half degree centigrade over wet bulb. 
in terms of cooling. So today or in these days when the wet bulb temperature is something like 22 or 23, we are able to get 23 and a half degrees centigrade with this cooling tower. Okay. Now this water is pumped through this heat exchanger and the ambient air, <coughs> say at 29 or 30 degrees, is passed through the heat exchanger. This drops the temperature of the air without adding any moisture down to about 1 degree over wet bulb without using compressors or air conditioning. So we are already getting say 23-24 degrees centigrade air uh, from the heat exchanger. This further goes into the, the air washer and then after the air washer, <coughs> sorry, it goes through a, another box uh, which is a French Swiss design which is titanium dioxide coated and has UA, UVC lights. That box is actually to reduce bacteria and fungus from the ambient air. After this box, then it is pumped into the, the two lungs, which, has these, which have these plants, and the, there is a drop of CO2. Today's readings are ambient air quality, CO2 level is 425. Where we are sitting here just now, the CO2 level is 404. So there is a reduction of nearly 5%. That means the CO2 outside is higher than inside. Inside is 5% lower. This effect normally is only found when you go to coniferous forests up in the mountains. So if you go to, for example, we measured some CO2 levels in Davos when the, the meetings were going on and the CO2 levels there were about 380 in Davos. So the idea is to be able to reduce the CO2 naturally, in other words, enrich it with oxygen to begin with. And that has a great effect because when you are pumping in that air which is oxygen rich air into the building, then you need less fresh air or practically no fresh air. So we found that even if with no fresh air, we, we can meet the standards because the USGBC standards on CO2 are 700 ppm over ambient. So we can go to 1100 ppm. But you missed out PM 2.5 and PM 10, which are also quite interesting. PM 2.5s are taken care of by the HEPA filters. So the, in any case, the air quality in terms of PM 2.5s is always under 15 here. We try to keep it under 10. And even after Diwali, the day after Diwali, Last year, I, we invited all the ambassadors in town yeah. to come and experience yeah. the worst day in Delhi yeah. and have a cup of tea with us or coffee with us. And a lot of them showed up mm -hmm. and uh, they were pleasantly surprised that outside mm -hmm. uh, PM 2.5 was 800 plus yeah. at the US Embassy yeah. and, under, and in our building it was under 15. So we've been able to do it. And uh, so the whole building is un under positive air pressure because you pump air from outside, clean it 100%, pump it into the building and the air conditioning system only removes the, re reduces the temperature and possibly the humidity. But that's what it does. The plants really remove bacteria and fungus, they remove VOCs and they add oxygen. The, the other machines which we have remove various other stuff like ozone, NOx, SOx, that is taken care of by mechanical filters or chemical filters. Right. So it's a combination of technology plus the plants because you have let the plants relax and do things which, which we have not found somebody else doing it. Right. Today there is equipment yeah. which is available. Yeah. Uh, air purifier, for example, from Switzerland, there is an air purifier called IQ Air. That does the same thing by pumping in a very small quantity of air from outside into your bedroom. But it cleans it up from all these various components. So, but it's a machine which is okay for your bedroom and will cost you about a lakh and a half. Yeah. So, it's not something which everybody can afford. But 
what we are doing here, it seems that every building in Delhi can have perfect air quality. Even they are the parliament, all the government buildings, there is nothing to stop them to have perfect air quality inside if they wish to. Right. So then let's talk about the linkage between air quality and the health benefits that come from it and, okay. and, and the whole idea of well-being that you've been so engaged with for the last few years. And there have been studies done, which I think was done in 2008 uh, by the Central Pollution Control Board and the Chitranjan National uh, Cancer Research Institute. And they came out with some very interesting uh, data on the health of the occupants of this building. Well, I think it was 2007 or 8. They did a two-year study, right. Central Pollution Control Board and Chitranjan National Cancer Institute. They did a two-year study of including blood tests and this and that of all the occupants of this building. And at that time, we didn't have such a sophisticated system even. Uh, in fact, our systems have improved over the years. Now we measure so many different, uh, so many items which we did not at that particular point in time. But they found less, less uh, asthma, less headaches, less uh, eye trouble, etc. They found a whole lot of health benefits and they published this report, which was, which was very interesting. But it was information for us also that yes, uh, something is happening because it's third party saying it is happening. Yeah, and the figures were very interesting because when I look at the data from that study, it said that the occupants of this building had 34% fewer respiratory ailments, 12% fewer headaches, 52% fewer cases of eye irritation and 9% fewer cases of asthma, uh, which, is, which is quite remarkable. And, and then you've gone on to also speak a lot about the linkage between good air quality and cognitive abilities and the kind of impact it has on the workforce. So that's very interesting. Well, over the past 25 years, we have found a number of tests which we have done that there is a 42% probability of your blood oxygen levels going up by 1% if you hang around in this building for about 8-9 hours. This is the results which we found. However, Harvard University has published a report which is available on www.thecogfxstudy.com which shows that if the CO2 levels inside a room are under 600 ppm, and the TVOCs are under 50 microgram per meter cube. And of course, they did this in at Harvard and uh, the air quality there, the PM 2.5s are under 15. Uh, the cognitive abilities can go up by as much as 299%, which is super significant. In other words, you can achieve your full potential as a human being. Because it's not that your intelligence level is, IQ is going up, no. It is what you are, but you are achieving your full potential. So my question to you is, you know, the way Delhi's air quality has been over the last um, four or five years particularly, there's a great degree of pessimism because, you know, as citizens, uh, you feel that nothing is really working in terms of the measures that are being taken. But, you know, the, the conversation that we are having today in terms of what you can do yourself and things that are within your means, for someone who's watching our video, uh, you know, again, I would want you to just summarize if, if I'm living in Delhi inside my home, what are the three, four things I can do to improve air quality in my living space? If you could just talk about that uh, once again, that will be very useful. Some of the things which I can think of first are, make sure there is less clutter in your home. Starting with your bedroom. You spend one third or one fourth of your life in your bedroom. So make sure that as far as your bedroom is concerned, you don't have any agarbatti, dhubbatti, no perfumes, no deodorants, nothing which is emitting any kind of smell, no air fresheners, nothing. Keep the place clean, dust free as much as possible. Open the windows every day in the morning, in the afternoon, sorry, in the, in the uh, you keep them open, but then you close them, say at five o'clock or six o'clock in the evening, and then put an air purifier on, which will remove the PM 2.5 and the PM 1s, but make sure that the air purifier does not emit ozone. 
because what is happening here in India is people from all over the world are selling air purifiers. Now they say that it meets EU reg regulations. Yes, the air purifier may meet EU regulations with respect to ozone, but if the ozone levels in EU are low, then you can accept a little bit of ozone as okay, all right. But if the ozone levels here are high, and then you add some, on top of it, you add some ozone, you're going over the top, and you don't want this ozone. Because if the outside air was okay, then you would step outside uh, from the dirty air, and nothing would happen to you. But here you're stepping outside, assuming that you're stepping outside your room into a dirtier air. So you need to make sure that that room is totally clean, and the least amount of VOCs. No smoking, no pan masala and zarda and all that type of stuff should be out. And nothing which emits perfume. Uh, don't put your puja room in your bedroom. Keep it, keep it in some other room. Open the window. Uh, try to not bring in shoes. You go the Japanese way in going barefoot into your home. Keep it clean uh, to the extent. Don't use phenyl and all these heavy stuff in terms of chemicals. Make sure you use as far as possible simple chemicals to uh, clean your home and not, nothing else. Try and keep all the knobs and uh, places which you touch very often clean so that you don't transfer the bacteria fungus into the entire area. Do not put plants into the room with gober khad and manure, which are going to be producing bacteria and fungus. Use veme manure or sterile manure or no manure. Use uh, media or just hydroponics water to grow plants inside your place. Keep the plants clean also. So look after your little area where you sort of bunk in for six to eight hours and make sure that area is the cleanest possible place for yourself. If you cannot afford an air purifier, then certainly put plants. Plants, the night plants, that means um, mother-in-law's tongue inside your bedroom. And you've also given the number of how many inhabitants yes. and how many plants, so yes. that also. Uh, you need at least four to six or eight mother-in-law's tongue uh, per person. But if you don't have space, then the simplest thing for you to do would be to, uh, which you can take some pictures here, uh, take a bottle yeah. and put some media inside and put money plants, lots of money plants, and put it in your room. At least the volatile chemicals will go away from your room. And it will also absorb some PM 2.5s. Uh, it will give out CO2 at night, but then you have to live with it. Uh, it depends on what can you do for yourself. Mr. Mittal, your doctors told you to leave Delhi in the early 90s, but you didn't listen to them and you decided to stay put and you created this marvelous story which tells all of us that, you know, it's not really a helpless situation and that we as citizens are in a position to do something about it, at least in our living spaces, inside our homes and offices. Thank you so much for joining us Thank today you. and uh, all the, the best to you. Thank you for the opportunity of talking about it. Thank you very much. Thank you.